Venus is a very fascinating planet. I think it's actually the most fascinating planet with the potential of having life somewhere in its atmosphere. And it's something that a lot of scientists have speculated for decades now. And several different studies in the past have suggested potentially detecting such life in the upper atmosphere. Be it through the detection of these so-called UV absorbers, the unusual features that seem to absorb a little bit more UV light than a typical planet should, or the much more recent claim from just a year and a half ago of the potential detection of a gas known as phosphine, once again in the upper atmosphere of Venus, whose presence in the upper atmosphere would only suggest that it might be actually created by life or some kind of a very unusual chemistry we've never experienced anywhere else before. How wonderful person. Today we're going to be talking about this study once again, but with a slight twist. We're going to discuss a very unusual mathematical phenomenon that essentially almost fooled us into believing there was life on Venus after all. Something if confirmed would be a huge discovery and something that could still be confirmed in the future, but as of today, as of 2022, the previous detection of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus might have actually been nothing but a mathematical error. An error that even fooled some of the smartest people on the planet which to some extent also shows us the brilliance of science as a discipline, or the most impressive use of scientific method to date. By analyzing, reanalyzing, and recalculating all sorts of data, the scientists have finally determined that there was actually an error to begin with, helping all of us learn and understand a little bit more in the process. So let's discuss this in more detail, and I guess let's start with the original proposition. Back in 2020, the team from Cardiff University, by using the data from the ALMA telescope and from the telescope known as GCMT, which stands for James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, collected a lot of data from planet Venus by looking at the absorption spectrum in the millimeter band, with the main purpose being the study of the atmosphere of Venus. And by collecting this data and by looking at various absorption spectra, it becomes possible to determine what sort of molecules are present in the atmosphere here. And typically it works something like this. By looking at certain absorption lines present in the entire spectrum of light detected from a certain planet, it becomes possible to determine what sort of molecules might be present here. For example, here's what Earth's atmosphere would look like with the absorption bands in this case created by various greenhouse gases. But that's of course just one of many examples of how this can be created and what all of this might look like if you were to look at this on different planets. But in this particular 2020 paper, the scientists have identified something really strange. Something that you see right here, another absorption line, the one that hasn't really been seen before around Venus. Corresponding to, as you guessed it, the absorption spectrum of phosphine and also possibly located somewhere around 50 kilometers in altitude above the surface. So sort of in that region around Venus, where we do kind of expect to have certain conditions relatively similar to planet Earth, at least in terms of temperature and in terms of pressure. But because of this announcement and because of how much hype it generated in the news, some scientists were kind of unhappy about this, and a lot of scientists got reminded of that announcement by Bill Clinton in 97, when he prematurely announced the discovery of life on Mars. As we know today, this was not the case. The life on Mars was not found back then, and has still not been found today either. And so a lot of scientists were sort of cautioning other scientists to maybe not make very strong claims about this. But naturally, we all wanted to believe that there was life on Venus, and some of us still do. But what exactly happened here? Was phosphine detected in this case really the case for life present in the atmosphere? And because of this announcement, even NASA administrator back then made a very big suggestion that we should be going back to Venus and we should be exploring it more. And only a few months after that, three separate NASA missions were announced to Venus, including the mission known as Da Vinci that you see right here. All of them are going to be investigating Venus in more detail. But many scientists kept arguing about the data here. A lot of them were not happy with this, especially because of the way that all of this was created. And because a lot of other data, specifically from other telescopes with other observations such as the infrared light, were not actually seeing anything here. But making claims or making suggestions is of course not enough. Scientists had to prove this, they had to show what exactly happened here and if there was any error present. And essentially for months afterwards, several teams were trying to figure out exactly what was miscalculated in this case and, more importantly, trying to show if phosphine was indeed there. Since then, three separate papers came out, 
reanalyzing all of this data using slightly different methods, and discovering time and time again that unfortunately no evidence of phosphine was present in the data presented by the scientists. Or suggesting that it was actually the data processing and potentially some of the errors and artifacts in the original data that created the observations that were now not there anymore. With the main culprit being a phenomenon originally discovered back in 1901, 120 years ago, and in essence being a kind of a statistical anomaly that actually exaggerates certain graphs. The anomaly we refer to as the Runge's phenomenon, or I guess Runge's phenomenon. And you might even still remember what all of this refers to. It actually is part of what's known as polynomial regression. And that's of course when you have a bunch of data points and you're trying to create some kind of a function that's going to represent what all of these data points fit into. With the polynomial regression, then creating some kind of a formula that you can use to try to predict other values. And for more complex data, you would usually use a higher order polynomial in order to try to fit all of this. So here's an example of certain points, complex points, that seem to be best fit with what's known as the ninth order polynomial. And if you're super averted to math, it's basically these graphs. This is an example of a third order polynomial or a cubic function. But as you raise the power of x, so basically as it becomes x to the power of 4, x to the power of 5, and in this case x to the power of 9, the function becomes slightly more complex. But in the 2020 paper, they were able to fit their data using the 12th order polynomial. So basically here it would be x to the power of 12. Although they might have forgotten something. They forgot about the Runge's phenomenon. By having a lot of noisy data and a lot of data that's obviously not super accurate, and by applying a high order polynomial regression to it, it's quite likely that the high order created all sorts of up and down wiggling as you see in this graph. The wiggling that was nothing but amplified noise, data noise. With later reanalysis using similar data, establishing that once you change the order, nothing seems to show or actually doesn't show as much. And one of the better visualizations of this was by Michael Greshko, whose uh, link you can find in the description, who actually shows us what happens as you increase the order of polynomials. And for some reason, the 12th order creates the most bias. It essentially creates the biggest dip that does appear like something is going on here. And though even for lower orders there might be something happening, in reality it's quite likely that this is just noise and nothing else. The noise that was unfortunately amplified by that strange phenomenon discovered 120 years ago and that many people just don't remember about. But more importantly, when the scientists look at Venus in other spectrum, they didn't see the same absorption line, which means that there might have been an error to begin with. And this particular phenomenon does create quite a lot of problems when using higher order polynomials. Specifically when using higher polynomials, it does create a lot of oscillation at the edges of the graph, presenting a kind of a fake detection when there is actually nothing there. And in this case it also suggests that by using high degree polynomials, you don't necessarily improve your accuracy. You as a matter of fact might have more problems. But even though this could be just a data problem and could have been an analysis problem, the scientists are still actually really interested to discover if there is anything going on in the atmosphere of Venus and if life could be there after all. Which is also why we now have these three missions going there. At the same time, because even with lower order polynomials there still seems to be something, a bit of a dip I guess, it still doesn't mean that nothing is here. The signal could still be real. But if it is real it's a lot weaker. And if it's a lot weaker, it could also be something that's not phosphine. For example, it could be sulfur dioxide that does have a relatively similar spectrum. And we know that there is sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere of Venus. Either way, this was still a pretty interesting journey, scientific journey, to see how the scientists went from a relatively big announcement to quite a lot of different arguments and a lot of different counter-arguments, and finally to a conclusion followed by a very thorough analysis including the very likely explanation for what actually happened with the data originally. Which obviously is also the beauty of science at work. Any big announcement or any big discovery, once enough data is accumulated and presented to try to oppose this original discovery, could actually present a very strong counterargument, suggesting that the original discovery was probably wrong. But by learning what actually happened and by trying to prevent these mistakes in the future, this is how the entire scientific community essentially grows and matures and becomes just a little bit better study after study. 
And although understandably some scientists were upset about the original announcement and all of the hype it received, in the end, only good things came out of this. We have more missions to Venus, we have better understanding of scientific process, and we got reminded that statistics can be quite tricky. But that's of course something we'll discuss in some of the future videos because there are a lot more studies that have experienced problems in the past. On that note, check out some of the other previous videos about Venus, including the actual missions that are going to be going to Venus in the next few years, and subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.